Meeting this little lady has changed every inch of my being. I hope beyond hope that I can inspire her to become whoever she desires to be and live her life to the fullest. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you and her to some inspirational women who are doing and did just that. Our first artist is Parisa Azadi, an Iranian-Canadian who continues to travel back to her native land to tell the story of a past she never knew. I think growing up here, there was always a feeling of fear and shame about being Middle Eastern and Iranian. It was something I felt like I needed to hide. So I think photography was a way to deal with that feeling of displacement. Growing up in Canada, I never had the chance to learn about my own culture and history. You, you don't get the opportunity to learn that in schools. You know, for us, assimilation was a survival tactic. So we had to dress a certain way, talk a certain way in order to survive. So it was important for me to go back there to find out where I belong after running away for so long. So as an artist who's discovered your own roots, what ultimately do you want someone such as myself, far removed from Iran, to take away from this exhibition and body of work? I wanted to show Iranians in their normal lives and how they cope and adapt to pressure. In general, in the West, where when we hear about Iran, it's always in the context of war and conflict and we don't see how these things affect people's lives. What I feel right now when I see the images we're seeing in the media, you know, they're usually images of black and brown bodies photographed in vulnerable situation, and the person making those images is m most oftentimes white and male. So mm -hmm. it's like you're, when you're constantly being bombarded with these types of images, you get this um, one singular narrow view. So it was important for me to show the mundane moments that you would see here in the West. And in a way, someone can connect to that. They could see a piece of themselves in that. And that's, I think, one way where you break down stereotypes. Breaking down stereotypes. That direction of intent is so important today, more than ever. Paul, oh, how was that introduction to Parisa? It was fantastic. It was really interesting to meet somebody who's actively engaged in Iran and creating art from that experience. It was really amazing. Amazing. And now it's my turn to introduce you to somebody. Who's that? Mary Ritter Hamilton. Who's Mary Ritter Hamilton? Well, Mary Ritter Hamilton is an artist that lived in Vancouver, was invited by the War Amps Society to go into the battlefields of Europe after World War I and basically document the aftermath of the war. And Udo Langman, is a collector of art and he owns a gallery in Granville Street and he's got a large collection of her work ready to get to see today. What was it about Mary Ritter Hamilton that you found really important in, in collecting and putting together a body of work? A lot of uh, art dealers will collect art that has a chance of going up in value. To me, it was always a historical value that uh, I looked at. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was one little painting. This is such a wonderful thing because we know some of the side story yes. in Flanders Field. The painting wouldn't be the same today if it wasn't for that poem. No. But it was sad that she had to die a lot of years before she became known to a lot of people. You know, I think this is such a huge tragedy that, you know, she wasn't loved and embraced for her work. I've invited Dr. Suzanne Steele to come down. She's a member of the Canadian War Arts Program and worked on the battlefields of Afghanistan. And she went over as Canada's first war poet. Her war work is very much alive. There's a painting here of the bunker and you see the razor wire and it's magnificent. We often focus on combat, the, you know, the front lines, but behind everyone at the front lines are dozens, if not a couple hundred people supporting them. It's interesting talking to Parisa again, and some definite familiarities to the Mary Ritter Hamilton story as what mm -hmm. we've just talked to with Parisa about. For sure, and just that idea of documenting or trying to maybe give a more correct narrative of what is going on. Exactly, a broader narrative. I think this is wonderful that you're paying attention to her now. I just grieve for her that she wouldn't have mm. known this. Mm. Yeah. Mary Rittle Hamilton's story is a great example of bravery, courage, and a sacrifice to create important pieces of art, not for her, but for generations to come. Another section of artists I'm interested in meeting before this series ends are the artists new to Canada, like Juan Pablo from Venezuela. 
Juan Pablo, thank you very much for letting us into your studio slash home. Thanks for coming. And thank you very much for David for setting this up, our sound mixer David, by the way. Having come from Venezuela and, and gone to Calgary and now landed in Vancouver, do you feel that there's a commitment to staying here and there's a light at the end of the tunnel for you as an artist and have a career? I do. Every city has its challenges, but there's a lot of opportunities here, I find. If you're trying to be kind of a commercial artist in the sense of lending your skills to the industry that requires it. Being an artist, as an artist, just producing work into your studio and being successful at doing that, I don't know. <laughs> Still to be determined, right? I mean, Vancouver has been very generous to me. I've been able to be an artist, visual artist and musician. I have tried both full time and it has worked out. And I've been able to live in a live-in workspace, which is very unique. There's not very many spaces like this, I don't think in, in many cities in the world. While I'm here building a positive and a successful career as a trained or skilled artist labor for creative fields, hopefully more avenues will open in the city to have more independent shows and more artistic outlets for art, the artists that are working in the city, right? Throughout this series, we've talked a lot about the past, understanding the past, respecting the past, being invested in the past. I know now within my heart how important that is to our culture and country not only for ourselves, but also for our children and their children to come. The other element of self-discovery I have uncovered in this series is how excited I am about the future and my family's future here in Canada. Thank you so, so much for joining Paul and I on this journey. And fingers crossed we get to share more tales with you on Art is a Story. Mm -hmm.